So there's really one thing that I like about Tom Clancy's The Division 2 and The Division 1 itself is the perfect balance of reality and gaming presentation. What I mean by this is the way the world is represented really does provide you a very interesting balance. You can look at the game and tell that it's a video game while at the same time looking at the game and in some instances doubting if it truly is a video game. What I mean by that is the way the world is depicted it does have, for the Division 2 specifically, a one-to-one -one representation of the areas of Washington, D.C. that the game is set in. For the Division 1, the New York depiction is not necessarily one-to-one. -one. However, it still does have structures that indicate that you are in these areas of New York City. I have two examples that I'm going to give you guys in this video. I've been playing this game for a very long time, but conversations that I've had externally with other people who've seen the game... I think are quite pertinent in this particular area. So number one was in the Division 1. A buddy of mine had just recently visited New York, and at that time I was playing the Division 1 very you know, heavily. I was making my first set of YouTube videos. A good friend of mine. And he came over to visit, and I said, hey, let me show you this game. So I showed him the game, and I was walking around those areas in New York, and he said, dude, these are some of the places that we visited when we just went for our trip in New York. And he went into the Flatiron District and was showing me a few things and was like, oh, wait, they changed the names of these things. And he and his wife had taken pictures and all of that stuff. And it was quite interesting just to watch him just look around the world. And I just gave him the controller and I just observed his reactions. I like to observe. And I thought this is wild that, you know, for me, myself, I'd been to New York years earlier, but I never really paid attention as to, you know, a lot of the different areas, I really honestly wanted to get the business I was there for done and back to my home base because it was kind of a stressful time. Uh, I don't even want to get into it, but it was 2010. If you were traveling in the spring or January of 2010, think very carefully what happened in December of 2009, and then you'll, re you'll remember exactly why that was a stressful time to be in New York City. And so that was the first reaction from him. He was really surprised and so on and so forth. The second one was a, it was a family member. Uh, specifically, my father-in-law, he's old school, he was a boomer. And so I ran over to Lincoln Memorial and I actually showed him Lincoln Memorial. And he asked me, he said, this is a game because he saw Abraham Lincoln, even though, you know, because this world depiction is a post pandemic world. He said to me, that's crazy that a video game can render something that looks so, you know, catchy. Like you could see it and know exactly what it is and question. And that was the question he asked because, you know, I'd already told him, I said, hey, let me show you this stuff on this game. And that was the reaction that he had. So that's basically one thing that I've always enjoyed with The Division in terms of its depiction overall. And to be very honest, I'm hoping that this same, I don't know, style, art, presentation, I don't know what exactly you want to call it because it's a, it's a combination of all of them. You know, it's not relegated to one thing. There's some aspects of realism and then there's some aspects that really do give away that, you know, this is still a video game. For instance, if you're looking at, say, this scene here where we're playing this particular mission, right? If you look at the outdoors, the clouds look almost, you know, picture, uh, you know, perfect. They're just basically super realistic. But then when you look at some of the different meshes and you look at the textures, then it kind of gives it away that we're still in video game land. Not saying that, you know, Ubisoft's massive uh, snowdrop engine cannot render realistic graphics, but that's not the look that they were going for, especially when you have a game that's an online game. You really want performance to be at the foremost. So you're not really going to pursue that. Right. So that mixture and that blend of the way it actually does sit in the middle, it's almost a I don't know. It really does work very well. I guess, you know, if you have the budget, you have the best, uh, you know, designers and the best, uh, you know, in my opinion, anyway, some of the best. I shouldn't say the best, but some of the best in terms of level design and you have access to a lot of talent. Many people don't necessarily realize, but Europe uh, has a lot of access to, you know, a lot of the talents that make a lot of this video game, uh, you know, assets and video game, um, you know, uh, what is it? All of the elements that make up video games. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of video game schools in different European nations. And so many of them can flock and some of the best of the best can flock to these big studios with ease. So studios like Massive, studios like, you know, uh, Rocksteady and publishers like Warner Brothers and so on and so forth in their European studios, they can really tap into this huge pool of very, very, very talented people that can pull these kinds of things off and they don't necessarily have to lack too much. But we're hoping to see this quality show up in the Division 3. I'm hoping that they actually bring some of these elements back and just, you know, enhance them as much as they possibly can.
Now, let me uh, let me get out of your hair. Thank you so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' this time and audience. Hopefully, we'll talk pretty soon. Let me hear your thoughts as to how this balance works and experiences that you've had showing people the division and then their responses as well. Thanks for watching. Peace out.